Grade 6 Math, number 11.6. Problem Solving, Missing Polygon Measures. We can find the total interior angle measures of any polygon by drawing triangles inside of it, then multiplying the number of triangles by 180 degrees. So you all know that if you follow my videos, when we problem solve, we choose a strategy. We can work backwards, we can solve a simpler problem, we can choose an operation or use a model, or we could use a formula or draw a diagram. We're going to use a formula and draw a diagram in this one, but not in that order. We're going to do the diagram first. So if we have an octagon, all we have to do is draw triangles inside of it. And the way to do it is we pick a vertex first. So I chose this vertex, and it doesn't matter which one you choose. This just happened to be the one I chose because I'm left-handed and it's right here. A right-handed person might choose this one or this one, so it really doesn't matter. So what I did was I drew a line from a vertex that I chose across skipping a vertex so that I could create a triangle here. And then I drew a line to each vertex after that creating triangles. See, I didn't do this one because it tr created the triangle here. I counted how many triangles I made, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I multiplied that number by 180 degrees, and this tells me the total interior me angle measures of an octagon. If you were to measure the interior angles of this octagon, let me get a different color here. Bear with me. If we measured this interior angle, and this interior angle, and this one, 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 and added, added them all up together, it would total 1,080 degrees. That's what we're doing. We're totaling up the interior angle measures. Whoops, we forgot one, didn't we? And that one, okay? So how many did we have? We had eight because it's an octagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight interior angle measures. And we were able to draw six triangles. See that? We multiplied the six triangles we drew by 180 degrees. We got 1,080. And that's all the eight interior angle measures for an octagon. For a pentagon, it's the same thing. I chose this as my vertex. And then skipping this one so I could create a triangle here. And then drawing it to the next vertex. And then I skipped this one so it would create a triangle. I made three triangles. That made 3 times 180, or 540 degrees, for each of these interior angles. See this one, this one, this one, this one. There's 5, because it's a pentagon. It's got 5 sides. It's got 5 angles. So the total interior measure of these 5 interior angles is 540 degrees. Now for a square, I chose this as my vertex. And I could only draw one line to the other vertex across from it because otherwise I wouldn't have triangles. I, I was trying to make triangles. So I made two triangles. That's 360 degrees for the total interior angle measures. And that makes sense because we know that they're each 90 degrees and 90 times 4 is 360. So that worked out. For a hexagon, I chose this one and I drew one, two, three lines which created four triangles and I got an interior measure of 720 degrees when I multiplied the four times 180. So this angle measure, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, totaled up, equaled 720 degrees. All right, so one more time. How do we do this? This is what we're doing. So here's a heptagon, and it's got seven sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What I did was I chose a vertex like this, and I skipped a vertex so that I could create a triangle. See? And then I drew a line to the next vertex, and the next vertex, and the next vertex, and I didn't draw one to this one because I want to make a triangle. And then I counted how many triangles I made. One, two, three, four, five. I multiplied the 180 by five. Five times zero is zero. Five times eight is 40. Carry the four, put the zero down. Five times one is five, plus four is nine. The interior of a seven-sided heptagon is 900 degrees. All these interior measures totaled together equals 900 degrees, okay? So we picked a vertex, we drew lines from that vertex to a vertex across from it that would form a triangle. So we had to skip the first vertex and the last vertex. We make as many triangles as that vertex will allow, 
and then we count the triangles, we multiply that by the number 180, and that equals the total of all the interior angles of the polygon, okay? Now, some polygons have vertices that are inward, like this one. And this is called a concave polygon. These are going outward, but it's got one going inward. Look at that. It might have two going inward. It could be a 12-sided polygon that has two or three going inward. This one has all the angles punching outward, and that's called convex. Inward is concave, outward is convex. This one's also concave. This one's got two going in. This one's going in, and this one's going in. The other ones are going outward. This is going outward, this is going outward, this is going outward, this is going outward, that one's going outward, but these two are going inward, so that makes it concave. So it doesn't matter how many are going inward, one, two, three, it still makes it concave. The minute it has one going inward, it makes it concave, okay? And then polygons that have all outward angles, those are convex, all right? Well, we can also use a formula to find the total interior angle measures of a polygon. And the formula is S equals N minus 2, 180 degrees. Now, if you look at what we did here, for the octagon that has 8 size, we multiplied it by 6. See? 8 minus 6 is 2, right? We took 2 away. The pentagon, well, it's got 5 sides, but we multiplied it by 3. 5 minus 3 is 2. For the square... It's got four sides, and we multiplied it by two. So four minus two is two. For the hexagon, it's got six sides, and we multiplied it by four. There's that six minus four is two. We got two again. So look what the formula is. A number minus two times 180. That's basically what we're doing. S means the sum of the angle measures, the interior angle measures. The N means the number of sides the polygon has. So it doesn't matter really, to make the triangles unless you like doing it. But all you have to do is take however many sides the, po the polygon has, 8, 5, 4, 6, 7, and subtract 2. The heptagon had 7 sides, and we multiplied it by 5 from the triangles we made. 7 minus 5 is 2. So whatever the number of sides it has, subtract 2 and multiply it by 180, and you're going to get the total sum of the interior measure angles, angle measures, okay? So now let's look at this pentagon. Did you know that that's a pentagon? Just because it says pentagon doesn't mean it has to be shaped like this. This is a convex pentagon. This is a concave pentagon. It still has five sides, one, two, three, four, five, just like this one, but it's concave because one of them's punched inward. Well, we know a pentagon has five sides. We put the five in place of the N in our formula. We subtract two. That gives us three times 180 or 540. And that's what we figured out before that it had 540, see? For the hexagon, we figured out that it had 720 because we multiplied it by four. Well, it's got six sides, and we put the six in place of the n in the formula, see, n minus two, so it's gonna be six minus two, that's gonna be four. Four times 180 is 720. Here's a convex hexagon, here's a concave hexagon, see? So this still has an interior measure of 720. This still has an interior measure of 540, just like these do, okay? So that is how you problem solve to find a missing measure of a polygon, because what you can do is, if you know that the interior measure of a pentagon is 540, and you've got four measures, but you don't have the fifth measure, all you have to do is figure out that it's 540 minus the total of those other four, right? Yeah. We'll talk about that more. I'll show you. Okay? See you next video. Bye.